Good. good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And thanks to Malaria No More for inviting us uh, at CIFA to be part of such a distinguished panel, uh, representing truly the mosaic of, of institutions and sectors who have come together in this international campaign against malaria. Uh, it's a privilege to speak to you on behalf of the Center for Interfaith Action on Global Poverty, located right here in Washington, on the grounds of uh, Washington National Cathedral, founded by Ed Scott, um, the well-known development philanthropist. I'm here today, as Mark uh, has introduced, to draw your attention to a big, new, cost-effective strategy for global health and for the fight against malaria, harnessing the vast untapped power and influence of faith leaders and congregations. There is no more efficient or cost-effective voice for health-related behavior change than an educated pastor, imam, or rabbi. Faith leaders are effective teachers because they're trusted by their communities and have many repeated opportunities to teach on Sabbath um, and in their preaching. They are efficient because they reach so many people so quickly. Mobilizing faith leaders on a national scale, as CIFA does, gets the message out to the furthest village at the cost of cents per person. My organization, CIFA, supports the full engagement of religious institutions of all faiths in tackling challenges of health and international development, and coordinating with public sector campaign goals and messages. One of the faith leaders' key concerns is the fight against malaria. I'd like to start out with my remarks by telling you about a conversation with Joanna Kume, a person who taught me a whole lot about the challenges of malaria on my first visit to Mozambique years ago. A fine woman with a great smile, living in a tiny village up in Zambezia. Of course, we talked about our kids. What else do we start with as, as women? Um, she said she had only two remaining kids, um, having lost three. Seeing my concern, she shrugged her shoulders in this indelible gesture, which I will always remember, but raised her arms and said, the rains come, the children start to die. Joanna, like generations before her, expects to lose many young children to malaria. A child like Joanna's dies of malaria in Mozambique every 15 minutes, about 45 thousand a year. Every one of these deaths is preventable. No child should be lost to malaria in this day and age. We know what to do. This Congress and others have allocated millions of dollars to fund the needed nets, rapid diagnostic tests, and treatments to save lives. Malaria experts have found that one of the greatest challenges in the anti-malaria campaigns is changing the expectations and behaviors of people like Joanna. That sense of resilience, that sense of inevitability. She doesn't know that malaria can be prevented and treated. Using the nets regularly, using them properly, and taking a child for testing and treatment, each of these steps requires education by somebody that Joanna trusts. She attends Bible study once a week at the Thatched Assemblies of God Church in her village. She worships there on Sunday. She's part of an outreach team for home health care. Her pastor has been trained to educate members of his community against malaria through his district's Programma Interreligiosa Contra a Malaria, known as PIRCOM. PIRCOM, which was organized and supported by CIFA, is a national campaign co-chaired by the Anglican Bishop of Le Bombo, one Bishop Denise Sengulane, and Sheikh Hassan Makta, who heads the Islamic Congress of Mozambique. Their objective is to educate and mobilize Christian, Muslim, Hindu, and Baha'i faith leaders across the nation uh, to mobilize their communities against malaria. Here come, with funding from the American people through the President's Malaria Initiative, with tremendous personal leadership uh, from Admiral Zimmer and the US Agency for International Development, has already trained 25,000 faith leaders like Pastor Paolo and established 38 interreligious councils who together have reached over $1.5 million congregants at the cost of cents per person to be educated against malaria. The pastor himself continues to use nets for his family. He speaks frequently about what he has learned about malaria in his sermons. Joanna trusts him. She uses a net now and is fighting back against the scourge of malaria for the sake of her kids. Nigeria, too, has drawn lessons from
from the success of faith leaders in influencing their congregants against malaria in Mozambique. The Nigerian government, with support from international donors, including the Global Fund, the World Bank, USAID and others, and with CFAS continuing assistance, has mounted the largest ever offensive against malaria, including distributing 63 million nets to 30 million households by, by the end of this year. To drive home and sustain the key messages about malaria prevention and control, the faith community has to be fully engaged and on message with this public campaign. Under the leadership of the Sultan of Sokoto, the head of the Supreme Islamic Council, and Pastor Oritz Yafour, the head of the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Nigerian Interfaith Action Association is working to mobilize and train up to 300,000 imams and pastors to educate their congregations nationwide and plan to reach a projected 30 million citizens to drive home and reinforce the public sector campaign. A rigorous evaluation of the added value of the faith leaders to the national campaign is underway. This is likely to become the largest ever collaboration among Muslims and Christians on a single disease. Not only are they working together, collaborating for the health of their people, but Muslims and Christians are learning, working side by side, developing friendship and trust across faith lines in a country with a history of intercommunal violence. In other words, inter interfaith action can in other words, interfaith action can contribute to interfaith peace and understanding, as well as to improved health and economic outcomes. As President Obama has said, and I quote, around the world we can turn dialogue, interfaith dialogue, into interfaith service. So bridges between people lead to action, whether it's combating malaria in Africa or providing relief after a natural disaster, close quote. In conclusion, I'd like to say that the tools to defeat malaria are there. New ways of delivering, of delivering and advocating for their use will allow us to win this fight if the funding is sustained. With scientists, government, the private sector all involved, and now adding the faith community on a national scale to the mix, the real possibility of ending deaths from malaria is in sight. This time is different. I urge your continued support for the fight. Thank you very much.